Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You know, last month I said it's about the best month to go fishing, talking about March and the top baits in March. This month's awfully good too. I got three really, really good baits for you. Uh, we're gonna dive off into some details and uh, some, fi you know, some really important things that I want you to remember for the month of April top three baits and as always we're going to be giving these away at the end of the video uh we just randomly go down through there and pick a lucky subscriber you'll win actually march baits in this video so you got to watch to the end you guys hit that subscribe button that like button here are the top three baits of april fishing right here on project e Okay, so let's put some scenarios out there. You know, you've got lo lots of different water. So I'm trying to give you three baits, you know, yet if you're fishing Table Rock, if you're fishing the lower end of Grand, if you're fishing Murray or, or you know, those lakes, you know, a lot of, the, a lot of that lake is pretty clear. So um, I got a bait for that. If you're, if you're like sight fishing, you know, or you got fish on beds or you see big bright spots down there, maybe you don't see the fish, but you need a bait to pitch in there. I got a bait for that. And then uh, I got a bait when it's gonna be more stained water. And one thing about all three of these baits, I think about covering water and, I, and that's a big issue in the spring because in April, let's like truthfully, like fish are spawning, like it's the biggest month with the most amount of fish spawning. I don't care if you're in Florida, the south end of Texas, all the way, you know, Heck, I, I would say in the end of April, you got fish spawning up way north. So, like, that's why I'm saying it's happening. Like, the month of April, there is, it's the most amount of bass all across the country that are spawning, and these baits are all right around that. So, let's talk about the first bait, and it's a swing head jig. And, and why I like this bait is, you know, over, just say, a regular jig or a shaky head, both great baits in April, uh, flipping all those things i can cover water a little bit faster and it stays in contact with the bottom that is so key to your baits this time of year like if you are truly fishing a, a shaky head or a jig don't be lifting that thing off the bottom you know like we do like in june you know drag 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 and that's what that swing head jig is you know this this thing's coming down along the bottom and it's kicking up dirt and debris and then bam it pops into a bed man, it's, you're gonna catch them. And so I cover water a little quicker. The bait that I really like to put on it, uh, it's a new Berkeley Shape 108. It's got some really big appendages back here. Yes, this looks like a crawdad. I think really truthfully when it's coming through the water, it looks like a bluegill. I will dye these uh, a little bit chartreuse. Um, sometimes I actually dye one chartreuse and one orange. I don't know, I just like it. I like how it looks coming through the water, uh, trying to imitate a bluegill. The thing about this bait is when you hook a bass, you have a lot of leverage out here with this weight where they can throw it. So a couple things that I wanna talk to you about when fishing it. Keep your rod down, keep your rod pointed at the bait. I generally start with 17 pound test, um, 14 very rarely, maybe 20 if it's really shallow, but 17 pound test. The rod that I think is absolutely perfect for it is a 7.6 carbon light heavy action rod. Um, and I'm going to point that rod down. I'm going to put a, a, you know, really, if you can get away with it, if you can reel slow enough with an eight to, eight to one gear ratio reel, that's the best gear ratio, but you have to reel it really slow. But then once you get that bite, here's the key guys. Once you get that bite, do not set the hook. You just start reeling as fast as you can. And you're reeling, 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 and everything's getting tight. And that rod starts to bow that's when you set the hook. That is such a key critical component. That's the thing about the swing head jig is the bite's a little different. Like when you're reeling it and you're just ticking those rocks, you're just feeling her tick, 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 tick. And then all of a sudden you're like, man, I don't have no more rocks. One of two things has happened. Either it's made a drop off, but most of the time you've got a fish and it's not like a, a worm bite a lot of times where it's thunk or, you know, that, that it, it's just, you lose contact with the bottom and it's like they've just come through it and they're almost swimming towards you. And that's why I'm saying you have got the real, 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 real rod bows up. And then you set the hook. And as you're setting the hook, you're reeling the whole time. 
really, really, really important. As far as weights on the swing head jig, um, I like a half ounce. I like a half ounce for that water depth, you know, five to, to 10 feet of water. And that's, that's a depth that fish are gonna spawn in when the water's really clear. Um, I like a three eighths ounce if I'm fishing shallower. If you're getting snagged up a bunch with that half ounce, then you drop to the three eighths. You know, it's just, it's digging too much in the bottom. Um, a lot of times, you know, that three eighths will also make you reel it slower. So experiment between the, 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 the half and the three eighths. Those are two sizes that I carry at this time of the year. Those are the best. Um, I also like to, I have that hook out. I, I very rarely like, you know, this is a bait that I'm throwing on rocks, on pea gravel. I don't, I, I have the hook exposed just like that right there. I'll put it just flat on the deal. I don't cover that hook point any. Um, that thing will swing really good. That's the thing I, I like about the fusion head. You know, it's got this keeper right here that I push it up on. You can see, see it off. You know, it, it works really, really well. It also makes that bait a little bit more free uh, with that, you know, some of them you actually thread it up on the hook. I just, I have a better hookup percentage with this style hook. This hook's also got that Teflon coating, but it's got a good barb. Uh, works really, really, really well. Um, I throw that a lot at like a 45 degree going down a bank and really pay attention to the rocks that, you know, your lake, they may spawn on rocks that big or that big, or it may be a mixture of, of rocks that big with little pea gravel, you know, or sometimes it may just be pea gravel. So uh, really pay attention to the size of the rocks and then duplicate that as you go through the day. Uh, that's a real, real key thing with it. You know, I'm gonna sit, like if this is the bank, you know, I'm gonna sit out here and I'm gonna throw at an angle and I'm gonna be able to bring it out like this. I don't wanna, sit and throw parallel because it just you can't keep it on the bottom it's really important to, to bring it at that angle because it's going to stay in contact with the bottom a lot better as you're reeling it in but that's it right there a fusion a swing jig half ounce a shape 108 green pumpkin a great great color you might go like with a california 420 uh, you might go watermelon red you know if you want to try some other shades but that's a three and a half inch um Shape 108, the half ounce swing head jig. Okay, let's talk about a stained water situation and another bait that I can cover a lot of water with. You know, April, and as we get into the end of April, those those uh, those fry are, are up on the water column. You know, bass are very territorial. Um, Pre-spawn, spawn, post-spawn, post all happening in April. <laughs> no better bait than a frog. A frog, a frog, a frog. I got two different ones here. You know, this is the top three baits, but we're actually gonna give away four here because I have two different style of frogs and it's a great thing to, to talk about. When do you throw the popping frog versus the walking frog or the standard frog? Okay, so for me, the walking frog, clearer water, calmer water. That's when I throw that walking frog or, or really shallow water, like um, clear, calm, or super, super shallow. That's when I can, it's just, a, it's less disturbing up there. Um, you can just walk it back and forth, you know, just, and it just really keeps in its spot. You know, I, both these are the same color. And, 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 you know, that's so much with frog fishing. I don't carry a lot of colors. I carry copperhead, this color right here, it's brown. It's just a great bluegill imitator, all around color, clear water, dirty water, works really well. I carry white, I carry black, and I will carry uh, a few more uh, like transparent colors for really clear water. But if I had to choose one, the copperhead right here. So we talked about where to throw the walking frog. Where do you throw the popping frog? When I've got a ripple on the water, if I've got uh, more dirty water, more stained water, you know, like I've caught them on that in muddy water. Like it's, it's just, if I've got to make more commotion, if I've got to make more noise, if, if, if they're not committing to it. And, and truthfully, um, if it's a little colder, you know, if, if the water's on the colder side, that popping frog will work, you know, cause I can keep it in one spot a little longer. It's got more drawing power from a little longer away. So windier, you know, conditions ripple on the water, stain conditions, uh, deeper water, you know, to, to make more noise, to call those fish up. Uh, really important guys, don't ever mess up and throw a frog on, on monofilament. Don't throw a frog on fluorocarbon. O always throw these things on 50 pound braid. I throw it on a seven foot three Bass Pro Shops, carbon light, heavy action rod, high speed reel. Um, it's just such an awesome bait because it's so weedless. So if you're taking your kid fishing, 
it is a great bait to put on this time of year just because they can throw it anywhere it doesn't get snagged and it gets lots of bites and really 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 big bites you can catch monsters on this thing all through the month of april on on a frog so uh those are the two frogs you know the two different types that i throw the two different scenarios when i throw those but you cannot go wrong throwing that okay the last one so you're going down the banks and you're you got bright spots and, and you're seeing fish and 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 you want to throw in those 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 bright spots you know a drop shot's going to be a great bait to throw you know just put your favorite drop shot worm on there like a a, a maxent hit worm or 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 maybe just a, a regular finesse worm or you know sometimes I, i'll put a general on there if i want a little bit bigger profile drop shot's a great bait you know shaky head's a great bait you know your favorite flipping bait all those things are great great baits but to take it to the next level the berkeley gilly and i rigged this thing on a tokyo rig you can actually build these things yourself just get you a little piece of wire get you a swivel get you a straight shake hook that's just a berkeley fusion uh three aught straight shank hook i've got it coming right out the top um i i put me a little bass pro weight right here uh that's about a three eighths ounce weight that thing's going to sit down in that bed it's going to be like this um uh, it's just an awesome bait i don't know what to say about it i caught like a seven eight pounder last year at lake murray bed fishing on this thing it's a bait you can pitch in there and just shake it and jiggle it um they will bite it because it just looks so real it's just a great great bed fishing bait they got three different sizes this is the 90 uh they got the 110 the 120 uh you know the 90 is a great one to start with you know a 110 or a 120 or maybe actually it's a 110 and a 130 forgive me on that it's a 110 and a 130 the 130 is a great size too if you got some really big fish and they're not paying attention to to a smaller bait like this um it'll work too you just rig it the same way with that hook right out the top um you know and the thing about this ghillie there's a lot of other ways you can rig it you can rig it through the side and just reel it really slow um you know i did a youtube video on that caught them really good in doing that uh it's just a super super fun bait to fish we're going to send this package uh to the winner uh this is hd sunfish that's my favorite color but there's a lot of other colors you can try a great bait this time of year you know it's just looks just like a bluegill i got a lot of confidence in it let me just tell you and i i'm telling you guys about it because it does work so that's my top three baits for the month of april uh there are a lot of other baits guys but these are three that that i that you got to have tied on no matter where you're at you know i, I love these two baits because i can cover water with them they're simple uh even if you are sight fishing you can be throwing these out in front of you as you're looking have this thing rigged up when you start seeing those bright spots pitch it in there drag it across there slowly uh, i'll rig this on a 20 pound test a flipping rod there's just there's no finesse to it you can drop the, shot this thing if you wanted to um you know for really clean water situations i've caught them that way too this way right here is more of my dirty water just throwing at a stain you know at a, at a bright spot in stained water so guys i hope these tips help you let's pick the winner of last month all right i've got it randomly right here on my phone we went through and picked it out all right we have got man i appreciate the comment night jordan three man nice nice tip you left me awesome tips love the berkeley lineup of base thanks for the opportunity good luck this tournament season hey night jordan three and with everybody guys um I'll never send you an email. I'll never contact you saying for you to mail me something. It just doesn't work that way. There's spam all across this world. So just know this is the only winner, Knight Jordan 3. Mr. Jordan, you send me an email and I'll get those baits out to you. Uh, thank you for leaving the comment. Thank you for being a subscriber. And uh, guys, I appreciate it a bunch. I appreciate you watching. Great month to be fishing. I'll see you in a few days with the next video.